What's up, friends? And welcome to another Six One Indie Showcase Dev Interview. My name is Kyle from the Six One Indie side. I'm joined by Alex from Polygon Treehouse to talk about Mythrak, the Ambrosia Island. Alex, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're super excited to have Mythrak be part of the show. Um, it's definitely an eye catcher, so it, it, it's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's really exciting for us uh, too. We've been beavering away on the game for some time now, so it's nice to uh, yeah show it off to uh to all the the fine people absolutely yeah before we get more into what myth Wrecked is all about um we'd like to get to know the devs a little bit more um so yeah. what's your history with gaming and and how'd you become a game dev so uh i've been making games professionally for quite a long time now so uh since 2002 so um i studied computer animation and i got uh playstation came and set one of my final year projects at university uh college as you might call it in america and um and so, yeah, I started working as a junior character artist on uh, the PlayStation 2 era. And I stayed uh, working at PlayStation across all different types of art disciplines uh, for about 14 years, uh, working on games like uh, Killzone 2, um, Ghost Hunter, Medieval Resurrection, 24 The Game, which is quite an interesting one. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, learned learn a lot of stuff um, from a lot of different people, but then... Eventually, uh, yeah, we decided to, to go indie and start our own studio. Um, so, yeah, very different from going from big teams to very small teams. But obviously, we've got lots of creative freedom to make uh, non-violent narrative games that are art-led. So that's kind of, um, yeah, that's kind of our in to making indie games. And you can probably tell by my accent, I'm uh, yeah, based in the UK. Actually, we started the studio in Cambridge, um, which is down south, but now we, after COVID, we moved up to the mountains of Scotland. So we have a new home for our indie development. Awesome. So how do how do we go from uh, you know animating and creating art for Jack Bauer in the Twenty Four video game to uh, uh, an island uh, like shipwrecked on an island game? Well, I think when we started to make indie games, started to think about what kind of messages what we want to put out into the world and obviously there's a lot of bad stuff happening in the world so actually having games that have a non-violent focus on story uh, and kind of community um and yeah emotional storytelling so we really wanted to, to focus on that stuff and our first game our debut game called Rurki, that was inspired by scandinavian folklore and it was a uh a kind of modern day fairy tale story of of loss and the regalvanizing of a of a a kind of slightly broken family unit, um, but all with trolls and giant ravens. So we always want to have like the fantastical. And so, so with Mythrect, uh, you've got to, you, who are a British backpacker, shipwrecked, shipwrecked on an island, and you've got to save the long lost Greek gods. So the gods, uh, they were always real. Um, they've just been away from the world, hiding out on this island. So you've got to try and help them. So we re really like the idea of. Ra you know, you being a real fish out of water on this island and being you know, a normal human with no magical powers whatsoever, and you being the one to have to help these gods. We thought that was a really, a really nice thing. But yeah, we always, always tried to have like a, a positive message. And Mythrex itself came out of COVID lockdowns, the spark of the idea where you know you couldn't go anywhere, you couldn't see your friends or family, you, you couldn't you know travel to exotic places so the idea of a game where you could go on a magical holiday and make some new friends albeit slightly weird ones being the greek gods uh, was you know that was the kind of jumping off point for myth right i love that and what made you decide on the greek mythology uh, opposed to the other pantheon of gods so my surname is actually canaris satiri so i have greek heritage um and so uh, my grandfather was a uh, greek cypriot and so always, of all the mythologies, and we actually read books on most of the mythologies like growing up, um, I was probably a little weird child and always uh, you know, interested in, in all those different folklore. And so having done, like looked at Scandinavian folklore, it made, uh, yeah, we, we was really interested in, in looking at Greek mythology. And ours is very much a kind of a typical interpretation of the of the gods. It's very much a modern taking mythology. So we look at it as, you know, these, it's, the game is set in the present day. So the gods aren't in like togas. Um, uh, they're very much um, living in the present day, but they've forgotten who they are. They don't. They can't remember that they're actually gods. They're kind of living on on this island, just kind of isolated from each other. Um, and so, 
it's allowed us to be really playful and also to use the gods um, to identify the problem, you know, look at and explore problems that people are dealing in their lives today. So we think of like when we were looking at the, you know, what is mythology and what are myths and very much stories that the people of the time used to make sense of the world. Uh, you know, why does the sun come up? Uh, that kind of thing. And so actually, you know, trying to look at myth right and trying to make sense of the world that we live in, you know, people working too hard, people who don't have very good communication skills or toxic masculinity, um, the environment. Uh, so actually, you know, looking with Poseidon uh, at some kind of climate stuff and, and Hephaestus is the god of craft and invention, is kind of almost addicted to work. And so looking at kind of rather than the, the gods being these beings on a pedestal that are perfect, you know, our gods are very flawed, they're very human. And so in bringing their memories back, you get to learn their stories and make, make friends with them. Uh, but yeah, we want them to be really not like Clash of the Titans. We want them to be, yeah, you feel like you can relate to them, connect with them and um, emphasize them. Yeah. How freeing or not freeing was it creating these gods and goddesses in modern setting visually like how many iterations did you go through before you're like oh that's our zeus that's our hades you know yeah it took quite a while i mean we go through like the 2d concepting stage our game's actually flat shaded 3d but we go through like a 2d concepting stage and do lots of designs one key thing we do in that rather than going right i'm going to design zeus right i'm going to design poseidon i, I, I designed them all as a ensemble cast from the get-go and so that's because basically we want them all to contrast with each other and all look quite different. And we've been very playful with some of their things. Um, and part of that comes from designing them as an ensemble cast. So, you know, uh, Hades looks like quite emo. We've given him kind of like pallid, almost blue tinged uh, skin. Poseidon's got quite a kind of aqua skin. He's basically, some of the inspirations for him was like uh, Captain Planet. So I'm a child of the 80s. Um, and, it, yeah. and he's got some kind of Baywatch shorts as well. So, there's various various things, but it allowed us to be, you know, to um, you know, pick and choose and make sure they all contrasted really well. I mean, Hephaestus was a really interesting one. So in our game, Hephaestus has like this cool off-road wheelchair, um, and you know, so you can get around the island. It's got these big off-road tires on it, and uh, and that came from looking at his original myths. You know, in, in a lot of the kind of films that that you know, the fact that he's kind of cast out of Olympus because you know, is deemed to be imperfect. And he kind of like wins his way back in. We wanted to kind of represent his, his you know, original myth in a, in a kind of modern way. And we had a really great reaction to that, which has been nice. And Alex herself, who's the, the player character, um, they, yeah, they're, we, they have some subtle nods to, to Lara Croft and Tomb Raider. They have like a kind of aqua vest and backpack and uh, hiking boots. So they're, they're definitely ready for an adventure. They've been traveling around Europe. Um, and yeah, Tomb Raider was a game that was developed down the road from where I grew up, which is like a really exciting thing. And so it was nice to have some subtle nods to that and adventure as well. I love that. That's great. Um, on your journey, now that you're on this shipwrecked island and you're trying to get the these gods and goddesses, um, their memories back to kind of remember who, who, who they are. What are the types of things that we're doing in like this sandbox world to, to help them remember who they are? So the key um, mechanic is uh, you have a device called an Ambrosidex. Um, and basically, once you've met a god, you can use it almost like a metal detector to find lost objects that belong to them, like your car keys or your wallet or your phone. Um, and so, um, the, so you don't, when you, uh, there's a bit of a mystery. When you get to the island, you don't know why they've lost their memories. But um, you can start to find hidden mementos around the island. So you might be exploring a beach, and your Ambrosidex will start going beep. And it's like um, an alien or an aliens, well, it's like the proximity thing. So as you're, ex you're exploring in 3D and you'll be getting beep, 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 and then an ex the island will reveal uh, a memento for you to collect in an unexpected way. It might be a barrel rolling over or, uh, you know, in a bird's nest or a, a cart moving or something flowing out of a waterway. And so the island itself is almost like a character holding these secrets. And when you've got these items you have to work out which god they might belong to so at the start of the game that's relatively easy you should just meet hermes on the the beach who's the the first god you'll meet uh, but obviously as you meet as you unlock more of the island and you meet more of the gods there's a kind of soft puzzle element where you go oh, okay um 
who might this belong to and they're, they're given in sets and once you've got like a set of mementos and you've given them it'll stimulate a flashback so they'll go oh i remember this now this was the thing with the thing and i did a thing and um and that brings back part of their memory and also tells you part of their their story so uh yeah we we I thought it was a really neat, neat way of uh, of telling a story and allowing you and the you know the normal, the normal person from Britain to to be helping these uh, these magical beings. That's great. I love that a whole lot. Do you have a um, a favorite god that is in your game, or are there any that didn't make the cut? There, there is. I think there was a few that we were uh, were were toying with, but I think I'm kind of yeah, I'm really happy with the set we've got. Oh, it's really hard. It's like picking your favorite. I, mean, I don't have children, but it's like picking your favorite yeah, child. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I do really like. So I probably relate a lot to Hephaestus, who's uh, basically toiling away, and he's a bit addicted to his work. Obviously, when you're making games, you're very passionate about it. So there's definitely elements that I kind of, uh, I, you know, I kind of recognize myself with him. Also, like Athena's in her library tower reading all the books. Um, but yeah, I think that hopefully there's something. You know, something that people will find appealing or they recognize as a part of their self in, in most of them. So Hades is the one that um, that people seem to be drawn to the most. Seem to have made him uh, unintentionally quite hot. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I think uh, for the people who like uh, sullen emo, brooding emos uh, with pallid blue skin, then they're in luck. That's all the rage. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um something and you you touched on it earlier uh, and I'm, i should have known this beforehand um but uh whitethorn is your publisher and mm. and i know their uh company kind of tagline or, or motto kind of vibes with what you're talking about where it's nonviolent narrative kind of storytelling um how awesome is it that you have a publishing partner that kind of aligns with that same kind of thinking well, that was the entire. That was why I kind of reached out to them in the first place after after Rocky, our debut game, because I knew that that yeah, the whole thing of like you know, not speaking any publisher, picking a publisher that um, yeah, that is our you know, it's non pressure gameplay. A lot of their games are non violent. Their uh, previous game they published, Lake, I was a huge fan of. It's one of my still is one of my yeah. favorite favorite mm-hmm. games. Yeah, so that was a real thrill to uh, get to chat to them, and obviously it was really chuffed that they were. Uh, yeah, they're, they're excited to, to sign the game, and yeah, they've been really good. And you know, there's lots of focus there on, uh, yeah, like accessibility as well, and accessibility uh, consultants, which has been really, really nice. Um, and we had some like learnings from Rookie. We wanted to improve on, you know, the accessibility side of things with Mythrex. So, yeah, no, it's been really nice. And like, uh, they've had you know, Botany Manor, Magical Delicacy just come out. So there's a real nice stable of games there. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I just love how they're the indie space is very much like you don't have to kill things all the time. Like, just tell a story, have a you know vibrant setting, and just mm. kind of enjoy the characters on the screen. And and I I enjoy that a whole lot. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where um, maybe for me as I got a bit older and you look at everything that's going on, and I had spent a lot of time making kill zone games. Yeah, where you just um and those I think those you know really learn a lot on those games. Can't stress that enough. Um, but you know when you're working on stuff and you're, people are getting you know there's stabbing, shooting, you just hear the signs of gunfire in the office, and it's like yeah, I think there's um it's nice to to work on something that feels uh yeah more uh like uh, positive. But yeah, I kind of love playing all types of games. Obviously, there's something for oh yeah for everyone. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the nice thing about. Uh, the indie space in particular you know, is such a such a variety there. So, yeah. yeah, I agree, and that kind of leads us into our last question before we uh, say our goodbyes here. Um, there's no right or wrong answer here, Alex. We ask every dev this question, uh, okay. so feel free to answer it in any way, shape, or form that you see fit. Um, what does being indie mean to you? So I think it means freedom, uh, creative freedom, and infinite possibilities. I think the uh, when you're working in in a in a bigger studio, um, you know, bigger games need to be focused in a, in a certain way to appeal to a, a wide amount of people. Uh, I think the the freedom to be able to make something weird and uh, and like uh, and something that's very much you is very much a personal expression in the indie games that are created. And I think that is very much um, why I still 
it's quite obviously it's really hard work, but I still really enjoy sitting down at my desk every day. And I think the thing that people really find appealing about indie games is the just the variety and the imagination of, of games that are available. There's something for everyone. Love that answer. That's great. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alex, thank you not only for joining me for this interview, for for allowing us to show off Mythrex in our showcase. We're super excited for it. Um, if anyone watching this or watching the showcase, if they want to know where they can play it and when they can play it, uh, let them know. Cool. So Mythrex is coming out later this year, and you can wish list it on Steam, and it will be coming out on uh, on consoles as well. So yeah, we're looking forward to getting it to everyone later this week. Awesome. Sweet. Uh, everyone watching, thank you for checking this out and learning about a, a awesome new indie game. Uh, please wish list the game for Alex and for all the <laughs> other games in the showcase. It helps a ton. Um, if you miss all the other interviews, go check them out right here on our YouTube channel, as well as the main showcase itself, because if you didn't watch that, what are you doing? Go watch that or check out 61indie.com where I'll have a full rundown of all the indie games that were showcased, as well as the, the showcase itself. Um, remember to stay safe. We love you very much. And remember to play more indies. Bye. Bye.